jest. Szewuna. May the words of my lips and the meditation of my mind be acceptable before you, Yah, my rock and my redeemer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First and foremost, giving all honor and glory to the God of our forefathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Yitzchak, the God of Israel. To him and him alone are all praises due forever and ever. Amen. And thanking him for the lives of all of you here today. Um, the men of the chief council, our chief Prince of Benyasaska, who is down south uh, congregating with our brother congregation, sister congregation, Hashaba. Um, all of you within the sound of my voice, I bid you all on the talk of my forefathers, forefather, Shabbat Shalom Lakam. How y'all doing tonight? Tonight, this afternoon, evening. God is good. Um, I, I wanted to glorify God in the congregation for a blessing that he has shown me. I was talking to my brother Mordecai um, earlier today. Um, and, you know, God has his ways of showing his miracles to who he chooses to show his miracles to. Um, you know, my youngest daughter graduated with high honors. She was valedictorian of a, of a class. That's one part of the miracle, but the real part of the miracle is a story that only few of you know. I almost didn't make it to see her graduate. And, you know, I thank God I got some tough people in my corner. They was like, yo, go anyway. So you know what? I went. Um... You know, I don't think sometimes you understand that when, even from a distance, when you invest in the education of your children and they output what God has given you to put in them and you see all of the talents that God has blessed them with, that you have to look at that and give them their praise so that they can continue and know that you're doing a good job. And for me to not be present and not give the, I don't want a video, pictures, or a live stream. I want her to see my face to know that Abby is proud of what you've been able to accomplish in your life. Because everybody don't just become valedictorian. That's not something that you just happen, you know. People got vote and choose and this or whatever. So I'm like, okay, uh, I, this is... If you were valedictorian of your kindergarten class, I want to be there. Of your daycare, I don't care what it is. So, I made it. Um, sometimes I gotta be careful of what I say up here sometimes, because I know sometimes people take clips and the words get out and stuff like that, but I'ma just say this. I see the adversary at work, but the adversary don't always work. I waited, I was patient. All of a sudden, um, you know, because the line was long, you know, and black people, they ain't waiting out, and they everybody got their tickets. I'm like, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. And then there was like a couple of us that didn't have tickets. And, you know, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm just hoping everything well. I already talked to the principal, but nine times out of 10, I'm not gonna see the principal again, right? So I'm like, Sister just came out of nowhere. Oh, let's find some seats. Let's find some seats. So we waiting, figuring out, and people's coming like, oh, no, I don't got it. I'm waiting for somebody. Everybody got their excuses. My excuse was the big excuse, too, but, you know, everybody had their excuses. I told her, Jamaica, mom, I said, Mom, a ticket in New Jersey, man. Now I go back to Jersey to get the ticket, mom. You can't do that. So, I, you know, I've I got to be humble, man. I'm just... In my heart, I'm, I'm praying to God in a way that's indescribable. But I'm saying nothing out of my mouth. It's something that God knows where I want to be. I want to be in this position so that my daughter can see me, that I can give her the support that she needs. 
somebody comes and says, y'all just come with me. And just rushed us upstairs, back in the cafeteria, somewhere, and we all got seats. And I said to myself, the average person is going to think this story is very corny. But I glorify God because in my heart, he knows that's what I wanted to see. And it was, it was attempted to take, be taken away from me, that moment to be taken away from me. But men propose things was God disposed. All the time. And I began to understand something. I said, you know, I, I don't ask God for a whole bunch of stuff. I don't ask him for like a bunch of money and this or that. I don't, that, that was never me because I, I would always think to, to ask God for the things that you know that you need, right? right? But I said to myself, you know, you have to learn how to pray to God for even the stuff that you want. It, it wasn't a necessity, but the energy that in the relationship that a man has with his daughter or his son or his children, in these times it's, it's, it's important that, you know, we embarrass our children for, for things that they do wrong, but we don't support them when they do things right. So when you do something right, when you're at the top of your class, listen, I, I, I would have been devastated if I missed what I missed. I got to see my, my baby talk in speech. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you got your eyeball with you with that, that whole talking thing. And then she's walking around. She got every type of award. He got the Bayer's Award, Chancellor's Award, the Division Award, this award, this award. She got all types of awards. And I wasn't just proud of her. I was proud of the whole class. Because everybody, there was another brother that was up there that had, um, what do you, when you have a, you have an IUD on your report because you have learning delays and stuff like that? Yeah, IAP. It's an IUD. Wow. But, but he had an IAP on his report and he got awards that he was accepting and he, and he was talking about his condition and stuff that he had to deal with and the support of the people that were around him. And what I looked at was the entire school, graduating class, they were all supporting each other. Yeah. All of them, like they were one team. There was no, oh, you know, I, I, I'm hating on me tiny because she got all these awards and I'm hating on this other. There was another brother that was there, got, you know, he was the, you had a valedictorian and a something, Salutatorian. He was a salutatorian, right? And my, my daughter told me how she wound up beating him out. He's like, you know, he gets into some trouble sometimes, so that's why, you know, he, whatever. But she had the highest grades, highest honors. And I told her, I said, listen, BT, you won at least 14 awards. I said, I ran out of, I ran out of, my voice is gone. And I, my knees started hurting from getting up so much. She's like, I don't know if I got that. I said, listen, I, I, I tried to count and I stopped counting, right? I was able to see her and hug her. I, that's not, I can't get that from the internet. I can't get that from watching something a day later, that energy. So when I saw her, and I was the first person to see her, and I said, Tony, Tony. And she's like, oh, wow. Like, you know, I'm here. And then my, um, my second born, she was like, oh, but you know, I'll send you the thing. I said, baby, I'm here. She said, what do you mean? I said, no, I'm here. I made it. And she said, wow. She said, I, I said, I'm impressed. Mm -hmm. I said, daughter, prayer and patience. So I know that sometimes our energy, we get riled and we, we, we don't get what we want and you know, but sometimes you got to let God control a circumstance. Yes, yes, got to let him control it because he knows best. He knows best. And, and usually I'm the guy that gives up on these situations because I don't want a bad situation to get worse. I'm like, you know, I wash my hands. I'm not going to deal with it. I ain't going to have no arguments with other can be. But, you know, I got some lines in the corner that said, yo, go. Mm -hmm. So I went. And they were right. And God was right. And the situation was right. And I was able to hug them, and, and I even told my, my second born, I said, listen, 
you know, you, your, your, your sisters, you know, they go, they get all these accolades and stuff like that. And, you know, they go, to, you know, because, you know. I said, but don't think that I don't see what you do as your, their big sister. I see the support that you give them. I see that you're, you're present with everything and, you know. I said, so just know that I'll be watching you too. So I want to thank God for that. Because God is always showing that he's present. It may be small to some of you, but some things is like, wow, I can see it. Because I can see the power that was against me and how the most high God was able to take me out of that situation and allow me to see what was in my heart for me to see. So um, I'm not going to be here long. I just wanted to, to make that testimony. Um, but I wanted to talk about the most high God's greatness because that's what the Shabbat day is for. Um, you know, Zakar went over um, Yom Leda Samiyak, by the way, my brother. We're not going to make you dance. Yeah. You know what? I, I know this. I know I'm doing this, sis, but I'm not trying to put him on the spot. You know, but we getting old now. Right? No, we getting old. Yeah. Yeah, you feel good, but I'm saying, let me, let me rephrase that. We're, we're getting up in age, right? I'm, let me not say old, because old could mean something different, right? Nah, he don't, he don't, he don't, he don't got to dance. We don't got no drummers to dance, but um, I met you in high school. I, I had to be what? 16? We had to be like 16 years old. And... um. How I, the circumstances on how I met him was real crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> no, how we wound up being cool. I met him before that, but that, well, yeah. yeah, how we wound up being cool with some other crazy stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm just testifying again in the congregation of the Most High God. I thank Him for the Most High for His life. Um, I mean, it's a very long time I knew this man, and you know. A lot of people that the Most High God may have used me as an instrument to teach the word and, you know, people come and go. It's always good to make sure that you encourage those people who are here and present and working and doing things in this nation. You don't wait till somebody pass away and give them their flowers. Give them their flowers now and, you know, on your memorial, I would like to just thank the Most High for your life. You know, you're 49. Is, I know you're 49 because I'm, because, because I'm 48. So I know he's 49. And as soon as he is him, it's him, ooze, and then I'm after. So I'll be 49 after. But, you know, he don't look 49. You Be proud that I'm saying this, bro. You look good. You good. You good. You know, we're not girls or ladies or women where, oh, yeah. When we're 49, God gives us that blessing. We age in gracefully. Todaya. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> she's getting kicked out. So, um, I wanted to just highlight something on the portion that was given today. Um, and, I, I, and I want us to think about it um, often. And I often try to highlight this point every time I do that portion of Korak, right? Um, Korak, you know, what he did was wicked. He paid for it. Datan and Abiram, they paid for it. They, they were very obstinate people. Even when, even when they were being pleaded with to, to make peace and not go this route, right? And oftentimes when, you know, when people are trying to give you your out, take your out. Take your out. Because you don't always know the circumstances behind you pushing the envelope, especially when it comes to God. Talk about You know, we always think that we, we have the answer behind the problem, or we know that, oh, this person is not going to do You don't know what that person is capable of, so don't bring them to that point. Most the Moses had to say if they die, and Moses said that they die or order. If this is normal, right? If this is normal, then God hasn't sent me. Like you know, and they didn't die a normal death. And I don't 
don't want that in my life. I don't want you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you know, I want to, God willing, maybe I die in my sleep. You know what I'm saying? It's rare, but, you know, God willing, that's my prayer. Right? I can go around my family, stuff like all that good stuff. You know what I mean? But I don't know. But I don't want to go out the way they went out. Right? Amen. But there's another funny thing that happened. I don't want to be the group of Israelites that tried to scream on Moses and Aaron because of the people that they just saw go against God and die. Talking about, you just killed the people of God. Yes, we did. Because they had to go. And you guys, what's wrong with you with your ambiguity when it comes to God? That's an issue that I'm, and I'm, I'm learning to understand the people I deal with and I get um, a lot of our issues as Israelites, right? But I think that we have to learn that if Moses dealt with 40 years of this people, you're going to have to deal with a long time of dealing with people because this is the way Negroes come. This is the way Israelites come. And if you're going to do this job, you have to understand the audience and the people that you're going to be working with. I'm not saying that, like T said just now, it's, it's, the prophets had to know that it will be difficult. Because you got to know, and I know me. And even in the, my bad states of knowing who I am, you got to know that when you deal with people, people come the way people come. They come with their issues, their trauma. They, 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 that's the way people come. And if you're not willing to, do, if you don't like blood, then don't be a surgeon. It's, it's, I'm just real talk. When you start to become that doctor and all, you got to know that you're going to see some diseases that you're going to have to call the, the CDC for. You're going to have to see some things. It's like cops. Sometimes cops, you know, I hear some stories about cops. Sometimes cops, they ain't, every cop ain't just going to be walking around with a uniform on. Some cops got to look at the mangled body that fell inside the train. That's, some, that's sometimes police job. They got to see things that they don't really want to see that give them nightmares at night. I don't know if you saw that movie called Deliver, Deliver Us From Evil. It's an interesting movie, right? It's supposed to be based on a true story, but this was this cop, he stopped going to church. But he wound up having to deal with some, some people that were soldiers from Iraq that got possessed by something or whatever the case may be. And it was just some weird stuff that either killed his partner, lady was doing all types of crazy, it was, it was crazy. But it, it's showing you that sometimes you have to look at things with the expectation of what was already given. So as all of us are here trying to be leaders, teachers, chiefs, whatever role that we play in this nation, there's a blueprint that's already given to us when we read this Torah. And I don't know who put it together, but you have laws, statute, commandments, judgments, but you also have stories, histories, of examples of the very things that God said do and not do. God said not to praise idols, but you have us making a golden calf. God said obey him, Keep his word, but we fell into my all people. We did all types of stuff right when God was with us. It wasn't like us where God is nigh, right? They were there just experiencing miracles. They just fresh out of the Red Sea and the death of the, uh, the firstborn of Egypt. But they still transgressed against God. We had a tenor meeting around us where we saw God's glory come down when Moses needed to conversate. And we still, we were boldly unrighteous before God. Amen. And what I say when I say that part, because oftentimes we always think of ourselves as righteous people, but if you were there, after that happened with Cora Dathan and the Byram, what side would you be on? That's right. Amen. Don't assume. That's right. Amen. With us, we're, we're volatile, we complain a lot, we have attitudes, we take issue with that. What side would you be on? You who may have been mad at Moses because he didn't rule in your favor. Oh, you think that because all this was about nepotism. Oh, Moses, you and your family, y'all are the ones that's the priest. Y'all don't want to spread the money. Like, this is us. And I say what I say is, 
you don't have to look at anything outside of your own personal history to understand what you need to change. You know, we would have successful revolutions in this country as black people if we didn't have black snitches. We would, there was pan-African movements all over. There's people that, you know, they knew that if they got free, they wanted to go to Haiti because Haiti was a free continent and stuff. We would have a lot of good things. We would have a lot of good, we would have a lot more money if we didn't compromise and we stood together. You know, there were people that would run up their land in Georgia, right? And what they would do, the state would do is this. They run the people off the land with violence. The people leave and then they auction off the land at a cheap price. They're still doing those things today, but you know, the people don't have solidarity. So when it's time for us to come together and do some things, we don't know how to stick together. So my thing is, when you know who you are, what character should you attach to who you are when it comes to knowing you're an Israelite. Because you can also choose the bad way. Right? You can choose the, 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 the unrighteous path. You can choose the arrogant path. You can choose the, the, the victimization path. The trauma path. You can choose all the types of paths. But you can choose the paths of the people that did things right because they were part of you too. Yeah, all of us got some core in us, man. You got to know that. And don't front when you're on Yom Kippur and you're saying your prayers, ask God to get rid of that Korah. But you also got some Moshe in you too. And that's the part of you that you want to promote. So sometimes when you read these portions and you see those parallels, you're going to be like, okay, I got both sides. Be honest with yourself, man. Don't, don't trick yourself and act like you got all Moses. Because we all want to be Moses. But a lot of us are Korahs. We know that. Think about it. Man, I want to I wanna be more Moses. I want y'all to think about this. What do you have to do to get there? It ain't sitting around talking about people behind their back. It ain't living nasty. It ain't, it ain't being spiteful. It ain't being vindictive. It ain't being all of this stuff. It's being the type of man that Moses was, meek and humble. The most meek and humble man that ever existed, and the only one that was able to talk to God face to face. And I'm even going to throw this at you. Amen. He had faults. Of course. Yes. He had faults. He had faults. He lost it. He lost it. And even a part of that, you got to look at yourself and say, wow, don't say if Moses lost it, I can lose it too. This is the Israelites saying, if he did this, I can do this. If David ate the showbread. No. If Moses lost it, then what could you do to prevent his mistake? Because it's rough. People will drive you crazy. Amen. Amen. Crazy. Amen. Amen. I ain't even going to mention no name because the person already knows who he is when I say it, but sometimes the same people you advocating for or the same demographic you're advocating for turns around and smack you right in the face. It happens, but you don't stop. Because your mission is your mission, right? Your mission is God puts you on a mission. If every time things were perfect, then what's the point? We don't live in a perfect world. There's not perfect roads. And that's not your test. Your test is not an easy road. Your test is are you willing to do the job no matter what? Because it ain't going to be easy for you. Some of you are looking and you raising kids that are insolent and disrespectful. And you be like, wow. And they come to teachings. They come services. But they still act up. Like, you know. Like, even God can't make you act right. But it's not your job to stop being a parent. Because one day they may wake up and be like, you know, the worst thing that I hear is that my mother never told me. You know why? Because even if you didn't listen, you can never say that you weren't told. 
the parent that t- you are doing your job if you're making sure your parent, listen, I'm warning you, I'm warning you, I'm warning you, I'm warning you. Because they, they, they grow only human beings, they're going to make their choices. But if you never told them, that's on you. Because your child was never warned. So I want to glorify God. I want to thank him for all the blessings he has bestowed upon me. I like to thank him for all the blessings he has bestowed upon my family. The blessing he has bestowed upon you. Um, thanking the Most High God for even the life of Tetsania for even bringing these lessons, um, improving. I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm. I'm prejudiced for Danites, but I'm. I'm trying to like lower that because I'm like you know. I, I think we should give other people a chance sometimes, but, you know, I'm just being real, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I think that the, the spirit of Sam Shimshon is in, in us sometimes as far as being judges and being able to see things in a certain way. But maybe I'm wrong. You know, this may be our pressure. But no, I just, honestly and sincerely, is um, the investment in the future has to be very important, right? Um, I think that more people should see what's going on and emulate as, a, as opposed to looking at it and saying whatever, you know, but, but we need more teachers. We need more perspectives, right? Um, but I, I just thank God because even with all the trouble and the drama, I wouldn't trade this for the world. You know, I love my people. You know, I've never seen Israel in the perfect state. I'm never going to see Israel in the perfect state. I just thank God that the Most High has mercy on us, that he is able to carry us through, and that there are people here because there's always people here that's willing to push to make things better. And that's what's important. God always gives us Jeremiah's, Isaiah's. He always gives us your Keskos. He always gives us Moshe's and Aaron's. He always gives us those people because you're talking about human beings that don't live right, that want, that even in their best days, and then we're talking about this generation of people who we got to survive a mass incarceration epidemic, AIDS epidemic, crack epidemic. Now we doing Mali, and you know. I want to tell y'all something before I even get off, right? And I want to thank God for this. There's two young black daughters. I think they're in Louisiana, right? They were they were asked to by their their teacher to find another path for the Pythagorean theorem, yeah. right? And I'm watching this, and this is interesting. Because mm-hmm. there are only two ways, you know, one's supposed to be by the Greek, mm-hmm. Pythagoras, whatever, and there's another one, whatever. And if you know, you studied math in school, Pythagorean theorem, whatever the case may be, A, C, D, I, I forgot, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, A, C, Z, squared, yeah, whatever. So these two young daughters, found from the same school but found different methods of the Pythagorean theorem to come up with a solution for that same issue. Right? And they're looking at them to see if they can go on some type of record thing for whatever it is. And they ask, why do you, don't you think that y'all because to me, I understand it, so it's a big deal to me. And I'm big on education, so I'm like, wow, they, they should be in history books right now. Why, why do you, don't you think this is a big deal? Because we're black and we're young females, so they probably don't think it's something that they want to make big. But if your daughters ever listen to this thing, that is, that is their whole countries on this planet that haven't done what you've done. That's the lack of press and empowerment that you're not getting because you did something so great. And I, I don't understand why people are not making a big deal of this, but they know who Sexy Red is. And girl, it, I, this is the contrast I want to make to you. When our daughters do something of this level of magnitude, nobody knows. But Sexy Red. And, 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 I forgot the other one's name that's hanging with her and there's Glorilla and all these all of these people are more important than them. They should be the millionaires. Not the clowns. Because there was a bunch of white people behind Sexy Red. 
Y'all think that y'all think that she's just a pure talent. She is a what do you call that? She's a yeah, she's a plan. She's an avatar. And it's, I'm not trying to knock anybody's progress in your hustle, whatever the case may be, but enough is enough, man. We're going to keep embarrassing ourselves in front of these, these I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say it. I'm going to get, get us taken off. But we can't keep embarrassing ourselves when we have stuff that we can invest in. And the world is showing us that they're daughters that are doing the right thing. That are geniuses. And we don't invest in that. We don't invest in high levels of intelligence. I'm, I'm still, I'm going to keep on saying it. Why didn't I know about hidden colors than that we took people to the moon? Why didn't I know about that when I was six? When that happened in the 60s? That should have been standard education for all black people if we were able to take people to the moon. But why don't I know about it? I know about Martin Luther King. There's, I, know, I know about Jesse Keep Hope Alive. I don't know about that. So I just want us to put things in perspective that there is a ram in the bush for Israel. There are all people doing what they're supposed to do. There are all people that are being guided in the right way. We just have to make sure that we foster more of that energy instead of promoting all of the negative and the garbage. With that, I hope you got something about what was brought forth. Um, hallelujah. Hand it over to Chief Meku to take us out for the rest of the day. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.